Welcome back. Hey guys, it's Rishi once again, and we're back with proportion. So what is proportion? Now, proportion is used to show how quantities and amounts are related to each other. The amount that quantities change in relation to each other is governed by proportion rules. Now, proportion calculations can be used to calculate values when one relationship is known. Now let's go through an example. So let's say we have eight pence and let's say they cost two pounds 16. Now, if we were to calculate the cost of seven pence, what would we do? So now to find out the cost of one item, we use the unitary method where we divide the cost by how many items have been bought. So once again, divide the cost by how many items have been bought. And any amount can be calculated when the value of one is known. So what that means is that I'm going to go ahead and divide eight by eight to get one pen and divide two pound 16 by eight as well to get the cost of one, which is then going to be 27 pence. So now I have the value of one pen, I could then go ahead and multiply this out by seven. And that is because I want to work out seven pens. So now I know one times seven is seven, so I can get seven pens. And 27 pence times by seven is one pound 89. So seven pens cost one pound 89. Now, if you haven't seen our best buys video, please go ahead and watch that because proportion calculations can be used to decide which items in a shop offer the best value. Many items sold in supermarkets have a price and a price per 100 grams or per kg. So this lets people compare products and get the best value for money. And even if you're comparing Best Buys, proportion calculations must be used to compare the cost of items. And this just makes either their cost or their size the same so comparisons can be made. And this is generally easier to make the size of the items the same, but how this is done can vary depending on the numbers that are used. So don't forget to click on our Best Buys video, which you should see on your screen. I hope that example was clear. Let's now move over into the first question. So here is a list of ingredients for making 10 flapjacks. Let's work out the amount of each ingredient needed to make 15 flapjacks. So we need to find the multiplier to get from 10 flapjacks to 15. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either divide these ingredients, you can either divide these ingredients by two and then add them on, to the 10 flapjacks, which gives you 15, or we can find the multiplier. I'm going to go ahead and find the multiplier. So that's 10 multiplied by something which equals 15. So if I take 10 to the other side, I will have 15 divided by 10, which gives me 1.5, which means I need to multiply all of my ingredients by 1.5. So we know 80 times 1.5 is 120. We know 60 times 1.5 is 90. 30 times 1.5 is 45. And 36 times 1.5 is 54. And that there would be my answer. So if I write this out at the bottom, we have 120 grams, 90 grams, 45 milliliters, and 54 grams. And that's all you would need to do. Now let's take a look at method two here. So I'd get my ingredients for 10 flapjacks. So I'll write 80, 60, 30, and 36. I would then divide this by two. 
Now remember, by dividing this by 2, this would give me the value of 5 flapjacks. And then I would go ahead and add them together. So add these all together. And that again would give me the same answer, which is 120, 90, 45, and 54. And there we are. Marvellous. Okay, let's dive into question two. So Fred has a recipe for 30 biscuits. And here's the ingredients for the 30 biscuits. Now he wants to make 45 biscuits. So complete the new list of these ingredients. So again, as I know, if we were to divide 30 by 2, we would get 15. And then if we would add 15 and 30, that would give us 45. So I'm going to do exactly that. So divide them by 2 and then add them on. So that would, would give me 115, 75, 50 and 1. I'll then go ahead and add these on. So again, my 30 biscuits and the value of my 15 biscuits would then give me 345 grams, 225 grams, 150 grams and 3. And that's all I need to write again in the bottom section here. And there we are. So I hope you can see how I'm breaking this down. I'm finding out the multiplier as well as finding out a more simpler way in which I can calculate what they're requesting. But then it mentions that Gil only has one kg of self-raising flour and she has plenty of the other ingredients. So work out the maximum number of biscuits that Gil could bake. So let's take a look. One kg of self-raising flour. We currently have 230, which gives us 30 biscuits. So let's write that down. 230 grams equals 30 biscuits. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to calculate the value of 100 grams first. So that means I would have to divide both sides by 23, which would then give me 10 grams, which would be 30 over 23. And then again, if I times this by 100, that would give me 1,000 grams, which is what we need. And that would then give me 3,000 over 23. So now we need to go ahead and calculate this. So that would be 3,000 divided by 23. We know 23 doesn't go into 3, but it goes into 30 once. And if I just place this here, we get a remainder of 7. And now 23 goes into 7. No, it doesn't. 23 goes into 70. Yes, it does. That's again 3 times. And that would give us 69. We subtract that away, and we've got 10. We know 23 doesn't go into 10, so we put a zero, and followed by a decimal, because we make this into 100. And then we know 23 goes into 100 four times. And then we can stop there, because we need a whole number. So the maximum number of biscuits that Gil could bake is 130. So again, let's take a look at what I've done. I started off with 230 grams, which equals 30 biscuits. I've then divided them both by 23 to get the value of 10 grams. Now, once I've got that 10 grams, I could have easily times it by 10 to give me 100 grams. But I times it by 100 to give me 1,000 grams, which is equivalent to 1 kg. I then started completing my bus stop method and then I got my answer. Brilliant. Question three. So here are the ingredients to make 16 gingerbread men. And Hamish wants to make 24 gingerbread men. So work out how much of each of the ingredients he needs. So we know that 24 and 16 have eight in common. So what we can simply do is work out half which again would be for eight gingerbread, and then add that on. So let's go ahead and half these out, which gives us 90 grams, 20 grams, 55 grams, and 15 grams. And now we can go ahead and add these on. So add them to each specific one, which would then give us, if I just write this out here, 270 grams, 
60 grams, 165 and 45 grams. And there we are. And that's all we would need to do. So I hope you can see how I've got half of 16, which is eight. And then I've added 16 and eight, which gives me 24, which is exactly what Hamish wanted. Okay, question four. So here are some ingredients needed to make 12 shortcakes. Liz makes some shortcakes and she uses 25 milliliters of milk. So how many shortcakes does Liz make? So we understand that for every 12 shortcakes, she uses 10 milliliters. So I'm going to work out the value of one shortcake by simply taking 25 milliliters and dividing it by 10 milliliters, which then gives me 2.5. So now I know that's the amount that we need for one shortcake. I'm going to times that by 12, and that there would give me 30. And then part B. Robert has a set of ingredients, and we need to work out the greatest number of shortcakes that Robert can make. So firstly, let's start with our sugar. We know that in terms of the sugar, 50 grams of sugar makes 12 shortcakes. So if 50 grams equals 12 shortcakes, then 500 grams will equal 120 shortcakes. So the way I've done this, I've just times both sides by 10. Let's then go with our butter. So with butter, we know that it's 200 grams of butter. So 200 grams equals 12 cakes. But if we're going for a thousand, we times both sides by five, which gives you a thousand grams and 60 shortcakes. So again, we times by 10 and we times by five. And then over to our flour. Again, with our flour here, we have 200 grams of flour. So again, if we have 200 grams, which makes us 12 shortcakes, we need a thousand. So we'll times it by five again and we'll get 60. And then finally, we go to milk. And with milk, we have 10 milliliters of milk. And that there would give us 12. But now with 10 milliliters, we need 500 milliliters. So with that 500 milliliters, we know that we need to multiply this by 50. So now we need to have 12, we need to multiply this by 50, which then would give us 600. And there we are. So now we've gone ahead and done that. The greatest number of shortcakes that Robert can make is going to be 60. And the reason we know this is because three of them are 60. So that means the sugar can also make 60, even though it states 120. But we can't make anything more than 60 because we don't have enough butter, flour or milk. Perfect. Let's now move over into our next question. Don't forget to pause the video at any stage. You're doing really well, so let's keep up the great work. So here is a list of ingredients for 12 small cakes. And we now need to make 24 of these small cakes. So as you know, the multiplier will be 12 times two, which gives us 24. So all we need to do is multiply our margarine by two. So if it's 180 grams right now, we'll have 180 times by two, which is 360. And that is our answer. But part B states that Sharon is going to make 18 of the small cakes. So we need to work out the amount of flour that she needs. So right now it shows us that we need 200 grams of flour. So if we know that 200 grams equals 12 small cakes, we need to make 18. So again, we can simply half this and get six small cakes, which is 100 grams and then add them all on, which would give me 300 grams for 18 small cakes. And there we are. I hope you're becoming more comfortable with these type of questions. Remember, this is absolutely pivotal in terms of your development, so let's keep up the great work. Okay, question six. There is a list of ingredients for making a pear and almond crumble for four people. And Jessica wants to make a pear and almond crumble for 10 people. So this is the ingredients for four people, but we need it for 10 people. So the first thing we're going to do here is find the multiplier. And that's going to be by simply having 10 divided by four, which gives us 2.5. So now we know that we need to multiply 
4 by 2.5 to get us to 10. So for every ingredient I have, I'm going to multiply this by 2.5. So let's take 80, we multiply it by 2.5, and that gives me 200 grams. And then for almonds, I'll do the same thing, and that will give me 150 grams. And then 90 times 2.5 is 225 grams. And then once again, we have 150 grams. And then 4 times 2.5 is 10. So now let's compare this to what Jessica has already in her cupboard. So she's got 250 grams of plain flour. We only need 200. So that is fine. She's got 100 grams of almonds, but we need 150 which means we need 50 grams more. She then has 200 grams of brown sugar, but we need 225, so we need 25 grams more. She then has 150 grams of butter, which is perfect for us, because we also have the same. And then she has eight pears, so we need two pears. So in total, the question is asking, work out which ingredients Jessica needs to buy more of. We know we need 50 grams of almonds, we need 25 grams of sugar, and we need two pears. And there we are. And that's all she would need. So again, what have I done? I've simply gone ahead and I've found the multiplier, which is 2.5. Once I've done that, I've then multiplied all of the ingredients by 2.5 and then compared it with the ingredients that Jessica already has. I hope this question was clear. Let's now dive into our final question. So 225 grams of flour are needed to make nine cakes. Marion wants to make 20 of these cakes, but she has 475 grams of flour. So does Marion have enough flour to make 20 cakes or not? Let's take a look. So we know that 225 grams equals nine cakes. We are then going to go ahead and divide both sides by nine. So divide by nine, divide by nine. So we're left with 25 grams for one cake. We then need to multiply this to get 20. So again, as you can see, I've divided by nine, but now I'm going to times by 20 to get 20 cakes. So now again, if we have 25 grams times by 20, that would give us 500 grams. And that there shows us that Marion does not have enough flour. She has 475 and we need 500. So if we have 500, take away 475, that is 25 grams of flour needed. So we can therefore say that Marion does not have enough. Magnificent. And there we are. That there brings us to the end of our session. I hope this topic was useful. I hope you can see how we can use mathematics in the real life, giving you the practical life skills that you need in order to advance further. Remember, all of the methods we've gone through are either involving your division or your multiplication. Always remember to find a multiplier between one number and another or one value and another. You've done really well coming this far. Keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next one.